Good day, everyone. We're heading out on another adventure today. We had such fun the other day at the antique shop, I thought we should go out and do another little adventure today. However, today we're going to sort of do the polar opposite of the more high-end antique shop we were at the other day. We are heading um, just off Cape, although many people still consider this area Cape Cod, even though it's on the other side of the bridge. But we are driving through our lovely New England autumnal leaves and uh, bright sunshine today to go out and look at the polar opposite of the more high-end antique shop. So here we are going through a little village called Onset, which is again just off of Cape Cod on the other side of the bridge, but it's still a sweet little town on the water and it's very much a summer place so it's uh, quite quiet this time of the year, although even more so probably because of the world we live in. But um, yes, we're heading off and today we will be doing some fun poking around and basically what's closer to thrift shopping or rummage sailing. While the prices will still be probably not as cheap as the French brocantes, it will still be much less expensive than a more established um, antique shop. Well, then let's head off to the thrift shop and we will have a fun little poke around and see what uh, little treasures we can find. And I hope you will enjoy just a nice little outing. And then later in the video, I think I will take us for a walk to our dock at high tide. Okay, let's get started with the day. Now in the pale October So here we are at the thrift shop, which as you can see already from the outside has much more of a yard sale or tag sale sort of feel rather than the nicer antique shop we were at the other day, but I'm sure there will be some lovely things to see and some great bargains. And I'm just happy to be out and about. And they've done a nice, nice job of setting up the little autumnal setup with the pumpkins and the corn stalks. So here we are entering the thrift shop. Now this would be, I consider, sort of the next step down from our antique shop. It's obviously quite curated um, and it is also indiv individual dealers as the antique shop was but this is definitely more of a thrift thing so it's much more vintage or not as nice antiques like there won't be a you know a five thousand dollar 1780 secretary and beautiful maple here but there will be darling little things you know vintage jewelry this rug is really pretty just little items like that. So here we have an interesting vintage Hoosier cabinet, which would be much earlier than my 1950 stove. This would have been, you know, 1910s to the 30s. But I was thinking this would actually be cute in an, the other house I still have yet to share that I haven't spoken with, but I will get to that story at some point. But yes, this is about 350, so, you know, it's still more than it would be at, say, more of a junk sale or at a garage sale. But it isn't too bad on it and prices are quite negotiable here i love this corner cabinet here or this corner um, little chest of drawers and mainly i'm drawn to it because i love this green so i would actually be interested in a color like this or a cabinet like this just because of the color the drawer opens fairly easy no sticking and it is dovetailed and, and that is only 85 dollars. and again i probably could get it for 65 here so let's just have a little rummage around so trying to hold the camera still. I really do need to get a gimbal, I think, but we'll see. Oh, and this little bit of one tiny little spode teacup. I love the color of this, though. I really like that sort of aqua to turquoise color. They actually had a little Christmas room, which I didn't visit yet because I am excited about Christmas, but I wanted to focus on not too much today. I want to just do that next step of we've gone to the antique place and sandwich. Now I want to go to more of a thrift shop, which is definitely this is. However, I cannot find any vintage hats. There's some lovely handbags there, but no vintage hats. I'm not sure why. Okay, let's head into the other room. This piece is actually, I mean, it's just a hand-painted piece, but it kind of has some pretty qualities to it. And I kind of like this little sofa. I need to find out the price of that. It's kind of interesting, actually. I'll, I should try it out and see if it's comfortable. I don't even dislike the fabric. It's actually kind of pretty. Look at this lovely piece, this lovely corner cabinet, which has a sort of fanlight shaped glass top. And I love the little curves of the interior shelves. Look how lovely that wavy glass is. 
it's still $8.95 so it's pretty pricey but I love and I love the old metal latch like that so it's really a pretty piece so this room has quite a bit quite a few books and a funny old tin dollhouse but I really kind of like this chair it's sort of interesting it looks very much like a East Lake uh, which is like an eight, a late Victorian style but yet the uh, fabric is uh, a play on an 18th century French tapestry. Obviously it's not real tapestry, but I really like the combination of the East Lake style with the, the French tapestry. So, and I sat in it, it's quite comfortable. So I think I actually might get this. Oh yes, look, it's only $40. So I think I actually might get this for the boathouse and I'll show you later why I think it's going to be cute in there. All right, let's keep shopping. So I think I'll just sort of move the camera around a bit just so that you can kind of just look around Again, as an example, how this is very much more a thrift shop than an antique shop, but things are still clean and nicely placed on shelves. And it, I know, um, having been stuck in the house prior to finally getting out now, that for viewers, sometimes it's nice just to have a sort of a feel of looking around if you yourself can't get out. It's a lovely little spinning wheel. My mother-in-law actually has a lovely spinning wheel in her house. I need to do a tour of her home at one point too, but We'll have to wait. And things like this, I often love to get uh, little containers like this, both for doing flower arrangements in as well as planting. This is actually would be great for Christmas to plant up with my paper whites. And that's only $12, so that's not bad. I actually have a vintage sewing machine already, a Singer, but this old Kenmore is really interesting. I'm, I would have to guess it's probably late 40s, early 50s. But it's really pretty and interesting looking and I'm sure it works and I love how it's in this nice cabinet. And home again, home again, jiggity jig. Now, I did end up, my one purchase was the little East Lake Victorian chair with the uh, faux 18th century uh, French tapestry on. And I just think it's going to be pretty adorable for the boathouse reno. And I want to show you why I bought it in one second. And then I made this short because I wanted to also share a walk with you today. So let's get to it. And now to show the method to my madness for buying this funny little East Lake chair with the tapestry on is if you will recall my funny American Limoges pottery with its little twee French scene. Look how adorable it looks with the chair. And as I'm making the kitchen and the boathouse a tiny bit bigger, I mean as big as one can make it considering its size, I think that this may even be a chair for the kitchen. But don't you think that's adorable? It really works well with the pattern. It's like it was meant to be. And yet I found that China so long ago and we found this today on our fun little outing. Oh, and by the way, the tide is really high, which are really low. So you'll see on my walk, which I'm going to take you on in a few minutes from this morning, that it was quite high. And yet here now we can see the tide is quite low. All right, let's get on with the walk. Now I've walked you this way before, but as you can see, we have a high tide. See my beach chairs are just about in the drink. Let's cut across our path here that we take to the boathouse, looking down on the beach, see how high the tide is. I thought today's walk would be us going to the dock again, but I want you to see it at high tide. The last time I walked you here, there was more beach. See how the tide's almost up to the little dinghy? and all the seaweed is covering the railroad tracks that lead to our boathouse. And our sandy beach here isn't as big because the waves are really coming in. And this time of year we always get this influx of this type of seaweed. Now this will all wash up on here, but this makes amazing, amazing fertilizer for the garden. It smells to high heavens. And you put it in a sealed five gallon plastic tote. You gotta keep it covered and you add water to it. But when it breaks down, the concentrate from that mixed with water is like the secret of the sea. Of course you rinse out the salt water first, but that may go without saying, but I suppose who else would use it except for someone who has access to the sea. And as this is our beach, you don't have to ask permission to get the seaweed, I don't think. 
Although this seaweed is not <laughs> endangered in any way. Okay, so we're heading towards, so you can see, now I don't know if you recall my last walk, or if you're new here and this is your first walk with me, you'd have to go back and see which beach walk I took to the neighbor's dock. But it was about mid-tide then, so there was a lot more beach. So here as I walk, the waves will be lapping and crashing upon us. But being a good little country girl that I am, I am of course wearing my wellies. So see, I'm protected. So here we go. And really, as I said, we've taken this walk before, but I just really want you to see how different the dock looks when the tide is high. And now we're, we are, I think we're getting into a new moon. I haven't checked the moon's phase. So during those time, the tide, the high tide is often higher. Not often, it is higher. And the low tide is lower. I'm gonna shut the camera off now so I can maneuver my way through these waves without dropping my camera in the, in the sea. I'm picking up our walk in here before we we're quite to the dock, just because I want to show. I've, so where I've just walked, I've basically had to walk on the neighbor's lower field here because the beach is completely gone at this point. And all the salt hay is piled up into their grass, or it's not grass, it's native grass. And the seaweed is coming up. But this is what this bit of the beach and the dock is like at a higher tide, so I just really wanted to share it. I think one of the reasons I never get bored here, <laughs> being so isolated, is every day and even from hour to hour, the landscape changes so vastly here, so drastically. <laughs> it's like you're sitting still and someone's just transporting you on a new holiday. Okay, I'm shutting off again because I have to maneuver this tall bank of drying saltine and shells, which is not as sturdy as it may look. So here we are, we're almost to the dock. And can you see the water lapping up over the very end? And I hope you're picking, I hope this is picking up the sound because that sound is amazing. And then see this bit here, it's like a stew of salté, sea foam, pushing its way up onto the dock. So let's go. And we are predicted to have rain starting soon through the rest of the day, but I'm not sure I believe it is yet because look at the sun through there. But those clouds have some promise of rain, but I'm not sure. I think if the rain's gonna come, it's going to come from this way. I do hope we do get rain because we so need it. So let's carefully walk our way out onto the dock. So you can see right here, watch, I love this. Now watch the sea. It's like it's playing a xylophone. Let's listen. You see it spray its way through the, the staves or the uh, boards of the, oh, that was a good one, the boards of the dock. So yes, the water is splashing up, the sea is splashing up over top. Now I haven't checked the tide table today so I have a strong feeling the tide, or I think it, I can't tell if it's still coming in. If it's still coming in, this will probably get covered. And this doesn't get covered throughout the entire cycle, just at the extreme parts. And you can see the fisherman's boat and their floating dock, and you can see why we use floating docks. See how high up it is? Oh, and now this can also explain when we had our sailboat, had a high tide, particularly a tide like this, although we'd make it, we wouldn't go at this high. It'd be a little bit lower. See how easy it would be for us to, fill our sailboat with two weeks supply to go to the vineyard and then just hop on the boat from here an easy little step and off we'd sail that way through Woods Hole out into the sea to Martha's Vineyard. So looking back at the dock now with a high tide splashing up and can you see it the lower part of the boathouse peeking out. I can never tell if it's showing up on the camera, but you can see it has, it has so much promise to be a bigger dwelling one year. We'll see. Actually, I have to talk more about boathouse renovations and things, so. But for now, let's listen to the sound of the sea on the dock. Thank you. 
Watch as it dances along. Watch as it dances along the corner of the dock there. See it comes up on the edge. And then, like a dance, runs across the edge of the dock. So that is our walk for today. And I'm so happy that some of you seem to enjoy my walks. I hope they're not too boring. I personally love my walks every day, but as many people have said to me, only boring people get bored. Oh, but look at that. First of all, that would be a lovely sketch and possibly a painting with a boat in front and you pick up that touch of blue there. And then in the background, you see the, the blue of the shell fisherman's shed you pick that up and then artistic license I'd spread some along there but you can see that the uh, leaves are starting to change the tiny little island that we uh, we sometimes kayak to out there in the center of this little this little harbor here is starting to get its leaves are starting to change so but I'm hoping the promise of this dark sky which I love an ominous sky <laughs> means hopefully we'll have rain and I love, I mean, I suppose that's why I love the sea. I love being in the house when we have a storm. And being here now, hearing the water on the dock, makes me so miss and long for our sailboat. I love being at sea. And I'm not a person who takes naps, but when we have our, had our sailboat, I would go into the little V-berth in the front, and I could sleep. And the bigger storms we had, the more I would sleep. And once we were sailing to the vineyard with a friend, my husband and my friend, were basically manning the boat so I didn't have to be doing s sail duty and when we arrived I had slept through it all and they said it was so turbulent but for some reason the turbulency is just it's like a mother's womb to me I suppose well one last look at the dance of the one last look at the dance of the water on our neighbor's dock Impertinency never does what one asks. All right, this walk has probably been long enough. Well, now I'm going to trudge my way through here, or possibly I'll go back the way I took us the other day through here and up the uh, lovely brick path by the neighbor's stone wall and walk the street back home. I haven't decided. So let's get on with the next part of this video. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's outing. I think that's going to do it for today's video. It was an interesting bit of a... Uh, we had our walk and we did some fun rummage sailing. I'm not sure if I would call it antiquing today, but I did get this darling chair. So thank you for joining me. And if I have any new subscribers, welcome. Uh, this is what I like to do. I like to share my life as an artist here on the sea. Sometimes that's going and looking at antiques now, apparently, <laughs> luckily, because we're starting to open up a bit more. And also, it is sharing my artwork on some days, and some house reno as well. All right, well, thank you for stopping by, and I will see you on the chats and social media, and I will see you on Wednesday's vlog. And remember, stay creative.